Three. Yeah, yeah. Two. One. Go. What is going on to all my returning journalists? Irvin Felix John here with the fitnessjournals.com. If you are new here, go ahead and join the journalist family. Uh, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button below and keep watching the videos. That's it. Make sure you share them because this is value. So guys, this is another episode of Brain Gains and in this video, we're gonna be talking about structural balance in relation to calisthenics. So uh, let's get right into the video. All right, all my journalists, before we get into the video, guys, make sure you smash that like button. This is how I know that these videos are helping you guys, and this is how other people know as well. Let's not be selfish with this information. Let's share it. Let's help other people get those gains, make progress in their workout lives. So uh, do that right now. Take the time. One second. I'm going to give you a second. All right. Thank you. Now let's get into the video. Structural imbalance. That's what we're talking about right now. We're structural balance, structural imbalance. Uh, obviously, if you don't have structural balance, then you have structural imbalances. So what exactly is it? Does calisthenics create structural imbalances? Let's say, for example, uh, you go to the gym and you only work biceps. It's pretty much what people do anyway. So you're gonna do this. Do you think, I mean, the simple question is, Will doing that create structural balance? You have an agonist, antagonist muscle, opposing muscle group. If you're only doing, working one muscle group, do you think that will create structural balance? Cue the Jeopardy music. Absolutely not. And not only will it not look appealing or aesthetic, but you are risking yourself a ton of injury by doing that. You know, compensations will take place and we know about these compensations and things like that. Um, you absolutely, absolutely do not want to do that. We're going to get into the steps, how you can prevent these things from happening. Um, I think it's kind of common sense, but once again, this is brain gains. Some 80% of low back problems are muscular and are said to be preventable by strengthening the low back muscles. So I know we've heard time and time again, people complain, maybe even you complain about your lower back. Guys, think about it. This is where that structural balance thing comes in again. If you're only, look, there's a saying, I can't remember exactly who I heard it from, but I agree with the saying. Of course, in the context, the only bad form is the form you spend too much time in. So think about it, you know, sitting, 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 that adaptive shortening, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, adaptive shortening, um, major key there in understanding structural balance and posture and all that stuff. But you're spending so much time in that seated position that opposing muscle group is always either activated or not, at, or the other muscle group isn't activated at all. And the only time it's activated is when you purposefully say, look, I'm going to work this muscle. And if you never do that, then think about it, it never gets activated. That is problems right there. You're running into major problems. And that is how structural imbalance not only begins, but that's how it perpetuates. Now, if you're like me and your primary source of exercise, the exercise medium that you choose is calisthenics, it's easy to run into structural balance issues if you're not constantly exploring ways to activate all muscle groups. Understand what I'm saying? If you do not have you know, equipment and things like this and you only have a floor and that's how you get down, you get down this, do your push-ups and stuff and you're not actively, look, there's nothing wrong with starting with the basics. We all have to start with the basics, but we have to evolve. You know, we have to move on, we have to find, not move on, but add on. I don't wanna say move on and forget about the basics, but add on, you have to add on to what you know. So if you start with push-ups and that's all you're doing, remember, the push-ups only focus on the anterior muscle, the torso musculature. So the front, in simple terms, that's what it means, the front of the body, of the torso. Structural imbalance will take place, structural balance issues will take place if you're, you're for months and years only doing that and then not focusing on the posterior. So if you're doing push-ups, you know, the posing for the, the um, anterior muscular group, uh, anterior group, you wanna make sure that you're doing stuff like inverted rows, things that target those muscle groups in the back. Balanced development of muscle groups reduce the risk of overuse injuries resulting from imbalances in opposing muscle groups. Simply put, if you're pushing, you also need to be pulling. 
That is the gist of what I'm saying. So look, I'm not just saying pushing and pulling every plane of motion. That's why I say I don't just, I, I, when I say I don't train muscles, I don't literally mean I don't train muscles. I train, I focus on movements. If I focus on movements, then I know every muscle group will be targeted eventually. So yes, training muscles, if you're a bodybuilder and things like that, but we're talking about calisthenics. Of course, we wanna make sure we're looking um, structurally balanced, calves all the way up to, to traps, to neck and everything like that. So making sure that you, yes, focus on things like that when you're, it's leg day, you wanna focus on calves and things like that, but working on movement patterns as well, you know? Um, horizontal pulling, horizontal pushing, vertical pushing, vertical pulling, things like this, um, hip dominant, knee dominant. You're not gonna miss a muscle group if you're keeping those movements in mind. So I wanna bring up something that I find to be very prevalent, especially when I'm dealing with clients and things like that. A lot of people neglect certain muscle groups because they just don't like it. That's their reason, like literally nothing else. They just don't like doing that. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can find an exercise that you enjoy that focusing focuses on that muscle group um, and you don't like doing an exercise in particular, that's fine. But some people don't like working chest or don't like working legs or and that's why they don't do it. Yeah, I mean, you might think that you're getting away with it. You're like, oh man, I've been doing this for years or whatever. You might think you're getting away with it right now in this point in time, but somehow, you're not going on affected. If years down the road, it will catch up to you somehow. You'll find that you're not immune to, you know, the mechanics and, and anatomy, how the body works. You're not immune to that. Things will happen if you're always, always, always focusing on one muscle group and then not focusing on another. Um, remember those opposing muscle groups, antagonists, agonists, something is going to happen. Compensations, that is like a major thing. That structural imbalance, Guys, posture issues are a dime a dozen. Everybody, you know, in this day and time who works at the desk, unless they understand, you know, functional movements and like physical therapist stuff, which I'm learning more and more about. Even me, myself, you know, I spend a lot of time sitting down now working at the computer, but even during that time I get up and I stretch, I do things like that, you know, making sure I'm activating those muscle groups that are in a constant position of, of either tightening or nothing at all. Now adaptive shortening is like a topic in itself, but I'm just gonna briefly mention it here. So adaptive shortening basically is when muscle tightness caused by a muscle being forced to remain, forced, all that, forced to remain like that. Forced to remain in a shortened position for a prolonged period of time. You know, being unable to lengthen and the relaxation of the agonist muscle group. So for example, with the chest, you see a lot of this kyphosis, for example you know, rolled over like that, that continue, continuing tightening of the muscles of the chest and the relaxing of the muscles in the back. That's how you get that. Adaptive shortening. So these muscles are constantly tight, just stuck like that. You have to be able to open up like that, you know, proper posture, working those back muscles, doing those stretching and stretches and things like that is a major key to making sure that you work on that posture. So once again, you have to have to actively think about these things, not just passively. It has to be an active part of your workout program. So how can we avoid this? How can we avoid you know structural imbalances? Having a plan. You have to create a plan. Like I said, working muscles, yes, is important. Um, of course it's important. That's why most people work out. But once again, if we're training hard, we want to also be training smart. If you want to get the best out of each session for the long, the long run, you know, we have to keep in mind that we have to train smart. So having a plan, if you know that you're suffering from, you know, some type of posture issue, uh, structural uh, balance issue, then create a plan. You know, if you don't have the knowledge on that stuff, find a trainer, find someone who's competent in this stuff, um, physical therapists, have them help you out in understanding what posture issues you have and how you can fix it. So once again, an action step that you could take now if you don't have it, and once again, prevention is better than cure, if you don't have any structural um, imbalances and or structural balance issues, what you should do is create that plan now. You know, work opposing muscle groups. So don't always just focus on doing one set of, of working out, one set of muscle groups. 
agonist antagonist work those different muscle groups those opposing muscle groups so if you do push-ups one day or if you even on the same day if you're doing push-ups make sure you also do inverted rows you know simple as that it's kind of simple um, but it's overlooked very commonly because you if you go into a gym and look at a lot of people you'll see that a lot of them in one way or another are suffering from some sort of structural imbalance so guys once again let's train smart in the comment section below let me know what is a major problem that you have um, whether when it comes to structural balance is there something in particular that you can put your finger on for you so let me know in the comment section below and of course guys engage so if someone if you see someone um, who has a problem an issue and you might be able to help them out go ahead and give them some some advice I'd like to see that guys so that is it guys that's the video for today. Stay tuned. I hope everybody, I know it's been a while since I sat down and done a, a brain game video, or done a sit down video, um, period. But here I am, I'm gonna keep uploading these. Got a lot of these question videos. So uh, let's keep at it guys. Help this wealth get money. Anyway, make sure, like, share, and subscribe. Definitely share this video with someone who would find value in it. We're out.